Hi, welcome back to the Save It For Parts channel. As you can see, I'm continuing to work on my airboat project. In my previous video, I redid some of the electrical, and in this video, I'm going to be tearing apart the carburetor and doing a general cleanup on the engine. Now, it's been a few years since I've been out on the water in this thing, and the carburetor and engine have just been sitting here, and probably any residual gas that's in there has solidified and turned into varnish and otherwise clogged up everything in sight. So it's a good time to go ahead and tear everything apart, clean out that carb, throw a carb rebuild kit in it, and curse at the designers of carburetors once again. So what's powering my airboat is this MZ34 paramotor engine. And this is designed for a powered paraglider, which is a kind of very small ultralight that you strap on your back, essentially, and you fly around with a parachute wing above you, and so it's pretty much the smallest aircraft you can get, although the manual specifically says that this is not approved as an aircraft engine, which I find rather interesting. I have seen people slap these onto slightly larger uh, rigid aircraft and ultralights that have a fixed wing. I'm not actually sure who originally made this. Uh, the manual that I have claims that it was made in Canada by Compact Radial Engines. I've also seen references to a company called Zanzaterra, who I believe originally designed this, and I think that they're from France. And there are some mistranslations in the manual, so I believe the manual was not originally written in English. There are a few things that I don't trust in that manual, such as the NGK spark plug number, which does not seem to exist in real life. So I've found spark plugs that are pretty equivalent, I believe. Otherwise, it seems to be a pretty well-made engine. Uh, this one has seen some flying use before I got a hold of it, and I've had to do some other tune-up work on it in the past. So I've dug out my manuals, both for the engine and for the carburetor. And I've kind of condensed everything down into a to-do list here of what I want to do to tune it up before I take it out again. And I've also purchased a carb rebuild kit, which is all the small parts and gaskets that you need to take that carburetor apart, degunk it, and rebuild it. And these aren't actually too expensive. I think it was 20 bucks or so. And that's well worth it to have a carburetor that actually works. So first up, we have to remove this carburetor, and then we can open it up and clean it out. And as I've mentioned in a previous video, I have a theory that carburetors were invented personally by Satan to make everything terrible for small engine repair. They always clog, the little springs and bits always fly out when you open them up, and they never work right, even when you get them back together. Alright, I've got the fuel lines disconnected, so I can get the body of the carb off of here next. And because engineers hate mechanics, they've designed this in such a way that you can't actually access or remove any of the bolts. So, thanks, engineers. You guys are wonderful people. Now I just need to disconnect the throttle cable, which I probably should have done first. And this is almost off of here, if you can even see anything past me. So, there's my nemesis, the carburetor. This one is not like that little weed whacker carb that I had on the motor canoe. This one has about 10,000 more parts in it. Look at all that garbage. So, that's probably going to be the rest of my day taking this apart. So we're starting to see some gunk inside of this assembly, and the old gasket kind of broke off when I pulled it out, so it's a good thing I have that rebuild kit so I can replace this gasket when I reassemble it. So I'll probably take out this piece, blast it full of the carb cleaner, and let it sit for a while to break up some of that residue and that stuff that's uh, deposited onto the metal. And that's where things start to go sproing. All 
All right, I've given this a good blast overall with the carb cleaner, and I've blown out all the little ports with a compressed air gun. I've got some of my extra parts sitting up here in the carb cleaner mix to uh, free up any gunk on the smaller nozzles and pins and things. And then uh, I think it's about time to start reassembling this thing and see if I can get it correct. I think I'm going to go ahead and replace my inlet needle. The old one looks slightly worn, and I have a new one, so I might as well just replace it while I've got this all open. And the trick is getting that inlet needle back into this little seat and getting the spring and everything back in there without it going boing. I showed this before, this is my high class air filtration pantyhose. I did not buy this, it came with the engine, um, but uh, that's kind of the first step in the air filter that goes over this carburetor. The old one on here is pretty gross, it's pretty ripped up, so I'm going to go ahead and uh, throw some pantyhose on this and filter out any bugs and leaves and whatever else wants to get inside the engine. Our main gasket here. It's still in good shape, but might as well go ahead and replace it with this new one since we have the new one. And it's time to bolt this back on the engine. And I might as well take this off, see what it looks like inside again, see if it needs another cleaning. Now there's some amount of carbon on this cylinder head, and there's a little bit down inside there. It doesn't look terrible though. I might just give it a quick polish and then uh, we'll call that good. And the cylinder head looks okay. Again, there's a little bit of carbon, but uh, that should clean right up. And the spark plug honestly looks terrible. I don't know what this white stuff is. I don't think I've ever seen one with white fuzz growing on it. So I'm going to need to find a new spark plug and then uh, polish up this cylinder head and inside the cylinder and then uh, put this all back together. Now I just need to torque these down correctly and get a new spark plug. So I have come back in and replaced my spark plug. I've also replaced the fuel filter. I had a smaller one on here. I put a bigger one on now. And so that should finish the basic tune-ups for this engine. I've thrown a little bit of gas in my tank and this is the 95 octane with the full synthetic oil. And I've gotten my rudder system hooked up again. You can see when I move the stick here it wiggles my little plywood rudder. And my stick also has a starter button and a kill switch, as well as the throttle. The starter is not currently working. I think there's either something wrong with the starter motor, or it just needs more amperage than a battery charger can put out to engage that little crank thing. So it looks like I'm going to have to hand start this for my test. And I have made sure to lash the boat into place, so that if it really gets going, it's not just going to fly into the garage. So let's give this thing a try and see if it'll start up. Lock the throttle into about quarter. The primer a little bit more priming here. Contact. And this is always fun when it happens out on the water, which means you're stuck drifting around and it doesn't want to start. Try it anyway. The 
carburetor manual refers to things that aren't there, like a choke shutter. I haven't found a choke shutter in this unit. I don't think it has a choke. Um, it also talks about adjusting the mixture screws while the engine's running, which is kind of impossible to do because you have to reach back by the prop to do that. Um, there is apparently some little device that you can get that adjusts those. I haven't found anybody that actually sells one yet, so I might have to build one. Well, that worked a lot better. Uh, one thing I did was adjust these mixture screws. I adjusted the idle open a little more, so that seemed to help. Uh, these are the things that you can't really adjust while it's running because the propeller is right here, but the manual suggests that you adjust them while it's running for optimal performance. So I'm really going to need to get some kind of a remote adjustment system for these two needle valves. So it's pretty snowy outside. I wonder if this would slide across the driveway on the snow. Stupid airboat tricks, take one. Let's do something even dumber than that last one. Give a like in the video if you want to see me take this down the road in a snowy day in Minnesota. I'm pretty sure I'd get pulled over. So that worked surprisingly well on the snow. I did smash my safety chicken wire here somehow. Not entirely sure what happened if the thing flexed into the prop or if it just uh, popped out somehow. I don't see any damage to the prop. So I'm not quite sure what happened here, but it looks like I'll have to cut this off so it doesn't happen again. And uh, the snow's really coming down. It's, uh, it's like half an inch deep after just a few minutes outside. So I think maybe next weekend we'll take this out to a lake or something and see if we can blast her out on some real ice. So I think a few more tweaks, a few more adjustments on those carb needle valves, and this should be ready for some ice, and then hopefully ready for some lakes and rivers in the summer. So, if you'd like to see more of this stupid airboat doing stupid things, go ahead and click that subscribe button down there, and go ahead and click like so I know that you guys like this video, and we'll uh, keep doing videos like this. So. Until next time, this has been the Save It For Parts channel. Thanks for watching.